For some people, cars are nothing more than a means of transportation. But there is another way that you can look at a car, as a thing of beauty and a work of art. American teenagers' love of speed has given us first the hot rod and then the drag racer. Mexican Americans, on the other hand, have focused on how the car looks instead of how fast it goes. They've taken the ordinary gas-guzzling Detroit monster and transformed it into a unique cultural symbol. In Mexican culture, beauty is part of everyday life, something to be shared with others. Mexican painters took art out of museums and put it on walls for everyone to see. Chicanos have put art on wheels. The car is ornate, sleek, and low, driven slowly so it can be better appreciated. To the community, it is an indication of its owner's status and taste. To the outside world, a symbol of the independence of the culture. Well, I'm just trying to tell them that, you know, like you're united, you can, you know, you're doing something, not just like what they're doing, you know. You... It is a low rider, and the way that it is put together, and the way that it is driven, is art. Not museum art, but popular art, folk art, living art. The car, to me, is a sign of their creativity, and they like to show it off, and, and very rightly so. Originally, it was a question of economics. As few Chicanos could afford new cars, old cars were lovingly restored and decorated. In the 1940s, wearing a zoot suit or driving a lowrider was an expression of cultural identity for Mexican Americans. Yet to the general public, the clothes and the cars were somehow un-American and associated with criminal activity. Lowrider to me was, I did that 25 years ago and my wife gets mad because I still carry two pictures of my car when I was in high school. The zoot suit disappeared for a while, but lowriding has never lost its popularity with young Chicanos to many blacks, Asians, and Anglos. Unfortunately, many of the old misconceptions about low riding have also survived. Yeah, I really think it's a lot of stereotyping because, you know, most of the people that have custom cars and that fix them up, you know, they're all hardworking people that have to earn their money to fix up their cars. Low riding has flourished in cities like Los Angeles and San Jose, cities that are defined by the automobile. Publications like Lowrider Magazine, which dubbed San Jose the lowrider capital of the world, have had an effect in promoting lowriding as an important aspect of Chicano culture. This program is also an attempt to define the essence of lowriding and to trace its roots in the Mexican-American community. I, I look at it this way. It's coming up and it's coming down because that's the way the hydraulics work. custom car lowered almost to the ground. What else is there to say? That low riding is a way of life? That the process itself can be as important as the result? A car like this, maybe it don't look nice, but to the person driving it, that means a lot. I want people to notice it, that I really spend a lot of work and time into it. Something to catch the attention of a car show or a judge or just a group of people out in the street. Pride, the pride comes with every car, no matter what the condition or the car is. Yeah, the pride is always there. But what is it that makes a car a lowrider? Custom bodywork, interiors, and special wheels are important elements. The low part in lowrider comes from hydraulic pumps that are installed in the trunk, allowing the cars to be raised or lowered at will. Before the introduction of hydraulics, lowriders used to cut the car springs or sometimes just throw bags of cement in the trunk to lower the car. Some do the work themselves. Others go to pros who specialize in custom work and hydraulic installation. It's done, man. Check it out or what? Yeah, go ahead. Is that how it works? Trying to. <laughs> hey, you got one switch for directional valve and one's for up and down. Here's a directional right here. That's like an instant tear cutter. Have it all the way down first, hit the directional, raise the back to anywhere you want it, and this you could raise the front to anywhere you want it with that one. You can pull up beside some old ladies and just drop your car and they think your car broke down. Raise it right back up and just surprise the heck out of them. 
More than anything else, it's the paint job that draws your eye to the car. Brilliant lacquers and flowers, intricate pinstriping, and murals that range from Star Wars to the Mexican Revolution. Some cars are subdued, others are an explosion of color. Rod guy wants it black lacquer rubbed out, and that's it. Maybe a few flames. Maybe a few flames, maybe some pinstriping, but they're very meticulous. Well, the lowriders are too, but they have a lot more color. A lowrider will come in here, and he'll he'll say, "Hey, I want it. I saw one of your cars in the show. Or I'd like to have it faded in blues, or I'd like to have a faded pinstripe in murals. Well, what do you want on the mural?" I basically put the whole car together for him. Many of the people that work on lowriders are not Chicanos. The point is not who does the work, but whose values and culture the work expresses. I'm, I'm Sicilian. I'm not, yeah. I'm not uh, uh, Spanish heritage or anything like that, so it, it seems like it doesn't make any difference. All they want, in essence, is business. They know that I'm, I'm very picky and, and very meticulous, and it's got to be to the point where I have to be happy with the car, and I will not rush for anybody. There's only so much you can do with custom paint, then there's an awful lot that you can do with custom paint. Now, I'm personally, maybe a lot of people might think I'm just blowing smoke or whatever, but custom painting is, a, is, a, is an art form all its own, and it's a very, 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 very demanding business. The finished car cries out to be admired, to be shown off. Some cars are so ornate and fancy that they are no longer functional objects, but pure art, only to be seen at car shows. But the real action has always been on the streets, where beautiful cars provide the excuse for the cruising scene, a social ritual that traces back to the paseo, or promenade of small Mexican towns, where young men stroll around the square in one direction and young women in another. Come out here and meet the girls. Uh -huh. you know, if you have a nice car, then it's even easier to meet the girls. You just pull up to somebody, and it was just a way of just greeting each other. You'd have two cars parked and just start hopping away. On the boulevard, hopping is just part of the social scene, but it has also developed into an exciting sport, the hopping contest.
Using hydraulics on passenger cars is illegal in California, but this law and other so-called lowrider violations are enforced selectively. My reason for stopping somebody uh -huh. is if I see them popping. Uh -huh. See, once they've, they've brought the vehicle up and down, there's another section in the vehicle code that states any time they've done that, what they've done is ruined the stability uh -huh. and the alignment of their front wheels, yeah. and it becomes an unsafe vehicle. Few people claim that the lowriders themselves cause problems. It's more that the cars and the social scene attract other people who cause problems, and then the lowriders are blamed for the whole situation. They're very protective of the vehicles because they have so much money involved and in, in, invested in those vehicles, and you don't see uh, the lowriders becoming involved in fights. San Jose is one of the few cities in the Southwest where some sort of understanding has been reached between lowriders and police. In other cities, police have closed streets and made mass arrests in order to discourage cruising. In San Jose, at least, the weekly cruise at Story and King on the city's east side has been allowed to continue. Police still write lots of tickets for hydraulics and undersized tires and acknowledge that the tickets are a way of putting pressure on the lowriders. Again, we're talking about making this an unattractive place for people to come to because of people's negative feelings about King and Story. And that's, that's one of the means of doing it. The feeling is, I don't, I don't know if we could totally end this. But it, we can't totally, and okay. let's try and make it as, as best as possible. Is the intention really to stop low riding? We would like to stop the problem at King of yeah. Story. I would love to take you to one of the meetings we've had yeah. with the neighbor yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. They would. I've had people just ask to please have uh, voluntary badges. And just make me a deputy. Yeah. I'll go out there and I'll start, quote, I'll beat the hell out of those guys myself. Yeah. But, you know, we, so we try and calm them down, try and find a happy medium between them and uh, the low riders. Hey, look at my forehead now. Because it's not going to go away, right? And you have to, there's got to be some adjustment. We wonder. We wonder if it'll ever go away. It's always having a dying down time, and every year, it's like, uh, there's a couple of months where it is real slow. But it always comes back, and it comes back strong. The rhythm of the cars is always accompanied by music. It could be funk, Latin jazz, or oldies. Every week, the San Francisco area gets a special blend of cruising music on the low show profile, La Onda Bajita. This is La Onda Bajita, Radio del Barrio, cruise to the best música del pasado en Norte Califas. Molina llega coming at you in company con el loco Buster at the controls. La güera, el tecolote, DJ Little Alemán y la ginger loca con la comandante of La Onda, the big ass himself. Aquí no más. To Michael Perez and Tocida, Santa Cruz, um, you really got a hold on me from Lourdes Gomez. This is La Ginger Loca and Toda Controla throwing out a special cue to Charles Penn and ESO. Happy birthday, you pan Killian. Woo! From todos sus primos y primas de West Side of Town. To Edgar Quiroz, stay crazy, it suits you, Esther, from La Huera Nomás. To La Loca Brown Eyes, don't let nothing get you down from La Loquita, La Sweetie, La Tweety. To todas mis primas de la sur, I feel good from La Huera y La Diego. The great pleasure in life is doing what people say you cannot do. Saying that lowriding is just fixing up cars, having a good time, and cruising the boulevard doesn't really tell the whole story. If there's an important event in the community, lowriders will be part of it, part of what gives the celebration its special flavor. One of these important moments is the quinceañera, the religious ceremony on a young girl's 15th birthday that marks her symbolic coming of age. For Amy, the quinceañera represents the transition between carefree childhood and adult responsibility, and much, much more. I'm celebrating the tradition that the Mexicans celebrated many years, and that it shows me how much my mom and my dad and my brothers care for me enough to do it for me. 
The tradition cuts across all social and economic divisions, emphasizing the strength and unity of the family. Oh, it means the accumulation of dreams that it started since my daughter was five years old. It goes back to the Aztec Indians when they uh, presented their manes to the tribe. Mm -hmm. It was that time it was, they were ready for marriage. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't present them for marriage because we don't want our daughter to get married yet. Yeah. Trying <laughs> we, to get them through high school. <laughs> we, <laughs> and then college. That goes like that, I think. Amy's parents were lowriders themselves in the 50s, but it was her idea to have low conspiracy, a San Jose lowrider club, escort her to the church. <laughs> Yeah, I can't even see. Oh, when they came, her heart just lit up, and she said, No matter what. This makes my day. That doll is the last doll she'll have as a child, and from there on, she is to be uh, treated as an adult, and she is to have the responsibilities of the adult. The mass also was telling her that when she was a child, all those things as a child were done. Now she's going into womanhood and adulthood, and she will be having responsibilities, and people will treat, be treating her as an adult, and she will be an example to others her age. Important values in a culture are passed on from generation to generation. Just as the quinceañera is something for each new generation to experience, lowriding is also something that is passed on from father to son. Believe it or not, as old as I am, I have a 1975 Stepside Lowrider. I still drive to work. So will I see you out there and on the boulevard some night? No, no, you won't see my kid driving it. <laughs> Even though they see it as positive, Amy's parents understand where some of the negative feelings about lowriders come from. You have your cholos that hang out at the same place. The term cholo refers to a style of dress and to the young Chicanos who wear it. In the eyes of some law enforcement groups, wearing the clothes is synonymous with gang membership, but to young people, the style is an affirmation of their culture. Some of our nephews and cousins are cholos, mm -hmm. but they're not bad cholos. I mean, it's just like every race. You have some good and some bad. I know when I was a girl, they judged me by the company you keep, mm -hmm. and it was against uh, school rules to wear those tight skirts, and you couldn't wear any dangly jewelry, and you couldn't speak Spanish. And uh, that's your basic right there, to speak your own tongue. And uh, just because I did wear a tight skirt or I wore earrings, it didn't make me bad. But at that time, you were bad. You were expelled from school. My children know so many different races and different people. And they've been involved in all kinds of activities since they were small. And some of the kids have had trouble, and they've gone another way but not because of what club they were in or what clothes they were. They just went that way. I heard about New Style for a long time, ever since I was a little kid, and I wanted to always get in a car club, and I always thought New Style, you have a lot of friends and a lot of nice cars, some of the best cars. Actually, joining a lowrider car club never made anyone go the wrong way. Although most lowriders aren't club members, the clubs enjoy a special status. They are highly visible through their involvement in community activities, and some of the best cars carry the club plaques. You don't have to be Chicano to join, just serious about cars. I grew up with Chicanos all my life, mm -hmm. so they're all my friends, and I'm that prejudiced person, and I like to make friends with everybody. Yeah. Jose's car! 
Just being serious about low riding isn't quite enough. Cars must pass strict inspection before they're allowed to show the car insignia on the boulevard. Each club has its own standards. For the Dukes, 1953 was the last of the good years. If you have the ability or the money, the car can serve as the canvas on which you express yourself. But many young people without cars still incorporate the image of the lowrider into their art, whether it is on paper or on cloth. I was at like a little lowrider, and I seen some dude with the Virgin Mary on the back of his shirt. So I said, hey, you know, that's a great idea, hitting up on shirts, you know, everybody can see your art, you know, you walk outside, you get something on your back. In Malo's t-shirts, you'll find references to prison life and street graffiti a mixture of Mexican history and Catholicism with images of death and the forces of evil. It's not that I like the devil or anything, but I like the way of it's mad, you know, don't mess with me, you know. Mm. One time I was on the bus, one time some lady said, oh, you shouldn't wear that on your back. Why don't you put Jesus or something? I said, it's not that, it's the art, you know, the way it looks, you know. People like it and I like it, so I wear it. But being special often means that you get singled out. Sometimes they drink up, make a lot of noise in front of people's houses, but everybody does that. I mean, even the high riders are over there partying, you know. Just like us low riders, people are people, everybody's the same. On the surface, there may be a difference between the people who can afford low riders and the kids on the street, but you have to look deeper. They got their car and they can go anywhere they want to, and they got the money, I guess, you know. The homeboys, they just stroll around, you know, go buy up, you know, kick back. Mm -hmm. They ain't got no ride, right? Yeah. But still, you know, it ain't nothing, you know? There's, there's a lot of people that don't have rides. Yeah. I mean, ain't, the ride ain't the main thing, you know? I don't it's, think it's... That's where you were, right? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, not every lowrider could draw. <laughs> so you got something some other people don't. Right, just like they got their ride, you know? Got something different, too, you know? Oh, baby, so much joy. It's not just Malo. There is a whole generation of artists whose roots are in their community, whose art is as real as the streets that it comes from. These images are from Arte del Barrio, the art of the community, a special publication of Lowrider magazine. Whether it's a mural, a drawing, a car panel, or a tattoo, art inspires other art, and the process continues. But before we finish, a few final thoughts and images. What I like to see in lowriders themselves is their creativity. They have a lot to offer to society, a lot to offer to the world, a lot to offer to the church. Uh, they're full of life, they're full of ideas, they're full of, of uh, energy. Throughout the barrios de Baslan, witness the expression of the Chicano pride wave. Simón que yes, la movida chicana, la onda de Aslan, la onda bajita empieza. Y estás tú, are you part of the onda? Cholas, cholos, gangas, pintos y veteranos, all proud y firme. Take a stand, parense, pleitos, gang warfare divides us, raza. Chicana empieza. Baggies, counties, dickies, briscoes, painters, Pendleton's, zoot suits. 
full of style with a smile and dignity. Take a stand, parense. La Migra raids send our gente back across a border that we never even crossed. It crossed us, Raza. Just the way that you This is your invitation, for we stand for pride, unity, dignity, and respect. And at the heart of it all, al mero corazón is love, el amor eterno. Pues que pues, are you parte de la onda? Cubo. a lot to me, something that I was, you know, I was brought up with that, you know, it's me, you know, it's not really, it really means something, it was just me, you know, I'm, I'm that.